but yeah, no, I for, I entirely I have to remember which Stasrik sheet to load up. I think it's okay. It's an active PC. So, okay, open. I even named it Stasrik GPT. Mm. All right, so let's set the scene. <clears throat> the hairball so the last time we in, we went to a dangerous world and we encountered some aliens that were very friendly to us and they fed us very well and taught us medicine and a bunch of other things and then we decided to explore an ancient ruin that and was and, and also the aliens uh, can grow at night or something oh yeah they can glow at no, night shrink. and <laughs> no, they shrink at night yeah and they shrink at night too which was cool like a cool that the the that Hal nine thousand Hal GPT pulled it out of its ass like that. Like okay, well, no, you know what? Was listening good, good to save. our uh, conversation. It was a very good save. <laughs> but anyway, so we entered into this ruin. We solved a little bit of puzzles, mostly by me making knowledge engineering checks, or sorry, engineering lore checks. And then Tinker it presented, the at the very end, it presented us with seven choices on where we were to go. Uh, the Great Hall, the Observatory, the Alchemical Laboratory, the Shrine of the Ancients, the Chamber of Mirrors, the Forgotten Archives, the Hall of Technology. And we chose the Chamber of Mirrors. And now, after I... <clears throat> read this i will screen share as the party steps into the chamber of mirrors they are immediately surrounded by a multitude of reflective services the mirrors vary in size shape and style creating a mesmerizing and disorienting effect the room is illuminated by a soft ethereal glow that seems to emanate from within the mirrors themselves as they move further into the chamber the reflections become more intricate and surreal the party catches glimpses of themselves, but with subtle variations and distortions. <laughs> it's a hall of mirrors. Some mirrors show reflections of places they have never been, or people they have never encountered. I don't think this is just any ordinary hall of mirrors. Yeah, no. <laughs> the air feels charged with a sense of otherworldly energy, and there is an unspoken anticipation in the room. The party might feel a faint pulling or tugging sensation as they navigate through the mirrors, as if the reflections are trying to draw them further in. The chamber is vast, with no clear exit in sight. The mirrors seem to stretch endlessly, creating an illusion of an infinite space within the confines of the room. It is a place where reality and imagination intertwine, where boundaries blur and possibilities abound. The party can choose to explore the mirrors further, attempting to decipher their secrets and navigate the enigmatic reflections. Or they can search for a way to unlock the true purpose of this chamber, perhaps by finding a hidden mechanism, or interacting with a specific mirror that holds a key to progress deeper into the runes. The Chamber of Mirrors holds untold mysteries and potential dangers, challenging the party's perception and testing their resolve. Only by exploring its depths will they uncover the true hidden, the truth hidden within its reflective embrace. Wow. Yeah, no, that was... No, it was a word salad. It's a damn tasty word salad. Holy crap. All right, can everyone see the screen? Uh, hold on. It helps if I get to watch the movie. Oh, yeah, I should probably also... There we go. Yep, I'm good. Up. Oh. Too too much too too big now or? I can I can read it just fine. Okay, you can read it Bottom just fine. Hand. Yep. All right, then allow me to pop it up for. Okay. Uh. So this is uh. This is strange, isn't it? A lot of potential for bad luck in this room. 
I don't think you need any more bad luck. That one mirror is looking at me funny. Well, Should stare back it? at it. Okay, Myra stares back at one of the reflections that she does not recognize. Myra stares back at one of her reflections. As Mora gazes into one of the reflections in the Chamber of Mirrors, she sees her own image staring back at her. However, this reflection seems subtly different. The reflection of Moira before her has a mischievous smile playing on her lips, and her eyes hold a spark of curiosity and adventure. Moira's reflection seems to beckon her, as if inviting her to explore the possibilities hidden within the chamber. The reflection's hand reaches out as if to touch the glass, as if bridging the gap between their worlds. Moira might feel a strange connection with her mirrored self, a sense of shared curiosity and daring. It is up to Moira whether she wants to interact with her reflection, trying to communicate or understand the significance of this connection. She can also choose to explore other mirrors in the chamber or share her experience with the rest of the party. The Chamber of Mirrors offers a realm of reflections and illusions where personal introspection and discovery intertwine. Moira's decision may lead her on a unique path within the chamber, revealing insights about herself and the enigmatic nature of this place. <clears throat> Moira, uh, I know it seems inviting to go into this mirror, but we do not understand the nature hey, of Ron. this. Yeah, yeah. Ron, do not, do not I let her. You're going to give your oh, reflection some of the bark? I'm going to give some of the bark. Uh, yeah. Moira. That's a dangerous. Hey, what the hell are you doing? This stuff doesn't grow on trees. Stasrek will look space at you, Ron. Trees. <laughs> space trees. <laughs> okay. Space trees. <laughs> Alright, Warren, prepare to fire on anything that comes out of the mirror. We don't know what's going to happen. I don't prepare. <laughs> Ron, you get prepared to slash the shit out of whatever is going to come out of that thing. Fair enough. I do that. As Moira throws a piece of the bark at the mirror, it passes through the reflective surface without causing any visible disturbance. The mirror seems to be unaffected by the bark's presence, as if the reflection within is independent of the physical world. Moira's mirrored self continues to smile mischievously, seemingly unfazed by the action. The reflection's eyes follow Mirror's movements with a sense of amusement and curiosity. While the mirror doesn't react to the thrown bark, Moira might feel a subtle shift in the atmosphere as if the chamber itself is responding to her presence. The other mirrors in the chamber remain unchanged, reflecting the surroundings and creating a multitude of reflections. Moira can choose to further interact with the- I'm gonna stop reading that shit. Myra, this is not- Maybe my reflection would. <laughs> The, the Ron throws a piece of bark. <laughs> While also eating it himself. There we I'll go. I'll take a bite and then I'll throw it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, as Ron throws a piece of bark into the mirror that holds his reflection, it passes through the surface without any apparent effect. The okay, mirror so. remains undisturbed, reflecting Ron's image back at him as if nothing happened. Ron's mirrored self continues to mimic his actions and expressions, seemingly unaffected by the bark's presence or Ron's attempt to disturb the mirror. Okay, the reflection's eyes yeah, lock in the mirror. Yeah, I go to yeah. give my reflection a handshake. Ron? <laughs> I can't hear you. Yes, you can. I'm right next to you, you asshole. Ron, this is a dangerous thing. I mean, it seems to me like these are all just portals, and we already went through one. Yes, but we yeah, don't we know really what... Close, we don't know exactly the nature of these reflections, and if you get pulled into there, and then separated from us, some forces could rip you to shreds. Hey, Miraron, what's your nature? Why am I going with a southern accent now? 
And I haven't <laughs> been bothering to do that this whole time. I didn't realize you weren't spoken so. Okay, where's my occultism? I'm a farmer. It just kind of happened. Uh, okay. <laughs> As we 20, all know, all farms are in the 23? south. Twenty-three. Yeah, I think we're all here like four of them and one little tree. Yeah. With his knowledge of occultism, Sazrik examines the mirrors in the chamber of the me chamber of mirrors. He recognizes that these mirrors possess a magical enchantment, likely tied to a loot. Well, there goes the low magic shot. setting. Shot every time the thing says mirrors, oh, my God. We're in the chamber of mirrors. What do you expect? It is literally called the chamber of mirrors. <laughs> this is not going Two to be the 10, chamber of non-reflective surfaces. This is going to be the Chamber of Mirrors, and there are going to be mirrors chamber in the of Chamber of Mirrors. <laughs> he recognizes that these mirrors possess a magical enchantment likely tied to illusions and reflections. The mirrors are not ordinary reflective surfaces, but rather conduits for magical energies. Stazarek deduces that these mirrors have the power to create illusions and manipulate perceptions. They may reveal hidden truths or distort reality, challenging the perceptions of those who gaze upon them. The mirrors could be used to deceive or to reveal hidden paths and secrets within the chamber. Stasrik also senses that the mirrors are interconnected in some way. Disturbing or interacting with one mirror may have an effect on others, potentially triggering a chain reaction of illusions or revealing hidden passages. Ron? It seems yes. to be that there's an in there's magic. Magic. Magic! I thought they were... There's, there's magic gathering here? Yes, it's probably blue magic, if I had to guess. Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> These mirrors blue magic seem to have the power to create illusions and manipulate perceptions. I've heard of people telling of such things when I was in the hospital, but I never really thought they'd be true. I mean, why not? I've heard of some mushrooms that can cast that type of magic. No, that just I, makes you I think may you have can farm some. No, they just make you think that that happens. <sighs> well, then what's the magic doing? Who's the strongest of the party aside from... Who's the strongest of us aside from you, Ron? Wait, oh, uh, is it me? The Ron in the mirror. In terms of what exactly? As in, who has guns? No, you want offense, right? No, I want strength score or modifier. Well, mine's 16, so... My deck is 16. Strength. 14. <laughs> okay, so it looks like Stasrik is the one, because Stasrik also has 16 strength. Alright, Ron? Uh, Stasrik is going to take his rope out of his backpack and tie some of it to, like, Ron's waist. And then Stazrik is going to hold on to the rope with a lot of strength. And it's going to be like, okay, run. We're going to try this. If you really want to shake your hands. Huh? <laughs> you what? <laughs> as soon okay. as you got me tied up, I'm like, all good. And I'll go in. I think we try the whole grappling um, hook method again. In fact, I'll try to tackle hug my reflection. I don't know if that <laughs> That's what you're doing. A tackle hug is a glomp. Depends how anime it's going to be. 
How anime is it? Sure. Sure amount of anime. <laughs> A sure amount of anime. <laughs> I feel that. As Thazarek ties the rope around Ron and holds it tightly, he cautiously guides Ron towards his reflection in the mirror. Ron, fueled by his determination, attaps, attempts to tackle Hug his own reflection. However, as Ron charges forward, his reflection in the mirror sh seems to shift and distort, mirroring his movements but eluding his grasp. It becomes clear that the reflection is not a physical entity but an illusion created by the magical properties of the mirror. Ron's arms pass through the illusionary reflection and he stumbles forward, crashing into the mirror itself. The surface of the mirror ripples like water upon impact, but it remains intact. The rest of the party observes this unsuccessful attempt, and Stazurik maintains his firm grip on the rope to prevent Ron from getting too far away or causing any <laughs> harm to himself. <laughs> so did you just Mario 64? He unsuccessfully Mario 64 would like imagine that I mentioned backwards long jumping before this. Okay. <laughs> yes. As Ron recovers from the stumble, he decides to try a different approach. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> With a determined look on his face, he backs up, takes a few steps back, and attempts a backwards long jump towards another mirror. Ron leaps into the air, his body twisting and turning midair as he propels himself towards the mirror behind. However, just like before, the mirror proves to be an illusion, and Ron passes right through it, landing on the ground with a thud. The rest of the party watches as Ron's acrobatic maneuver fails to achieve the desired result. Stasrik, still holding the rope tied to Ron, ensures that he remains safe and within reach. It seems that the mirrors in this chamber are not simple portals to another realm, but rather an intricate magical illusion. Well, we have to break the mirror, but which mirror is the real one? We have to find. I say we really try to find to a real mirror. Why, why are you telling us to break the mirror? We have to try to find the real mirror. All these mirrors seem to be an illusion. Yes, and those. Uh, are we gonna use perception checks for that? How the hell do I roll a perception check on this thing? Twenty-four for me. All right, uh, what is Moira's perception? 18 plus 8. Jesus, how the hell? How the hell do you have plus 8 perception? All right, uh, what about, uh, Ron's perception? Nope. Roll a 9. 2 plus 7. Oh my god! <laughs> Even in Path Builder, you roll shit. All right, uh, what's Warren's perception check? 11 plus 5. Okay, that's not bad. At least it's double digits. <laughs> I said, Strax can't break the curse. No matter where he rolls, he rolls shit. Oh, one time, I'm sorry. To be one. fair, last session I started with a Aww. nat 1, and then most of my rolls were above 20. Oh, that's fair. Oh, come on, don't, don't. Okay. Stazrik and Moira carefully scan the mirrors, searching for any that hold exact reflections. Their keen eyes pick up on the subtle details and distortions within the reflections, 
allowing them to differentiate between illusions and actual mirrors. Stazrik spots a mirror tucked away in a corner that seems to hold an exact reflection. Its surface is smooth and flawless, without any distortions or peculiarities. Moira, with her sharp perception, notices another mirror in the center of the chamber that appears to hold an exact reflection. The mirror reflects her image accurately, capturing even the smallest details. Ron and Warren, however, struggle to identify any specific mirrors that hold exact reflections. The illusions and the multitude of reflections make it difficult for them to distinguish the real mirrors from the fake ones. Stazric and Moira point out the mirrors they have found to the rest of the party, hoping to navigate through the chamber more effectively. Hmm. Moira, you find anything? Okay, and I found one too. But how are they connected? Mm. And we found, like, we found our own mirror, right? Like, you found one and I found one? Is that how I read that? Yeah. Hmm. Whoops. Typing's hard. Oh, shit. So the illusory mirrors are present within the real mirrors. Damn. Okay, that's a really good illusion. I hate this puzzle already simply because finding the real mirror should have been the key to solving it. Is it possible to move the real mirrors? Oh. Okay, I know exactly what to do. Hold on. Uh, where is my thievery check? Gonna dis <laughs> Anyone else wanna go? <laughs> I rolled nine plus five. How the hell is yours? My thievery is uh twenty plus four. Holy shit! Okay. Why did we all fucking take thievery? Well, mine's just because of high decks. I think Warren's is also just because of high decks. Yeah. I think you and I are the only ones that actually trained in Thiever. Oh, shit. Does that mean you can even disable a device? Hold on. Oh, you guys can't do it. Apparently, uh, disabling a device is limited to... How Hal doesn't know that. Hal doesn't know that? <laughs> Look, guys, we gotta check ourselves as much as we have to check Hal, okay? I don't like it either. So, okay, Stazric and Ron both failed spectacularly. We don't know that. <laughs> DC 13. <laughs> DC-13? There was no fucking thing in Pathfinder 2 that's a DC-13. Uh, taking a whiz is DC-12. Taking a whiz is not DC-12. Fuck off. <laughs> what happens if you fail? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're still peeing. Oh, that was a funny thing that uh, I'll tell you, Pooper, at about... Uh the party yesterday oh, God. yeah oh, God. that was yeah themselves. <laughs> hold on hold on hold on so you our cousin our cousin our cousin that we haven't seen in like 10 years or so until uh, you know very recently uh, uh looked like he wet himself <laughs> and he even uttered the line i think possibly not ironically who peed my pants <laughs> but before then, he was holding one of the younger kids. 
So we think that maybe the kid had actually actually had he hit on him. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so what was Ron Stevery? Awesome. Uh, nine plus four. Yours was also nine plus four. Wait, nine plus five. Oh, okay. You, oh, okay. I see how it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm better. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot. So you have higher decks than I do. I, I dumped uh, Stasrix decks. I made him a muscular medic. Um. <laughs> Hal. Did not expect shit rolls. Hal, come on. Here, boy. Uh -oh. I refreshed. Um, <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. Your, mouth, your cursor was still on the bottom of the screen. I thought... So, wait a minute. It says two of two. What does one of one look like? Or one of two look like? That. Yeah, no, one of, so it generates the responses, but if it just crashes, then I just refresh. Stazwerk and Ron try their best to detach the mirrors from their fixed positions, but despite their efforts, the re mirrors remain firmly in place. It seems that the mirrors are either securely anchored or have mechanisms that prevent easy removal. Further attempts to detach them without additional tools or knowledge might prove challenging. I am going to make a knowledge engineering check. Do I take insurance? Not in favor, is it? Oh, assurance, no. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna aid you, uh, Ron, in trying to discover the mechanisms that we can detach, and I got a twenty five on my knowledge engineering. Okay. Wait, what am I rolling? Uh, theory. Five. I rolled a twenty-five too. Oh shit! Damn. With with the plus two circumstance bonus? Yeah, eighteen plus seven. Oh wow. I got 19 plus 5, or plus 6, yeah. I know how to map. <laughs> I know how to look down at my phone. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> so, what was your uh, roll plus bonus? 18 plus 7. Fuck. With Sazrik's knowledge of engineering and his assistance, Ron is able to approach one of the mirrors with a better understanding of its mechanisms. He carefully studies the mirror and manages to disable a hidden device that keeps it fixed in place. With a satisfying click, the mirror becomes detachable. Ron successfully removes the mirror from its position, revealing a hidden passage behind it? The fuck? Huh? Well, that's not where the power thought this puzzle would be solved, but alright, let's continue hold on. Hold on, hold on. Ooh, how about we try taking down the other mirror then? Okay, so we have six mirrors in the chamber. What if we all make them point at each other? I don't think they were originally trying to be. Can I have a Fig Newton? A Fig Newton? Did you almost eat them all? No. There's a whole other half in here. You almost ate half of them. Um. Oh. Hmm. Are they all? They're like attached to walls, aren't they? Hmm.
Okay, so I'm going to ask it. Oh, it crashed. <laughs> yeah, because you did play out. Oh. I didn't think we did this. <laughs> I, didn't think, I didn't think you guys would ask this question. It's not in my notes. I'm recording. Okay. What the fuck? Why is sexy goblin in your notes? Oh, okay. Where it's like the uh, guy is interviewing the DM is like, oh, you did such a great job, and so it's like, dang, what's that note? Okay, sexy hold goblin. on. To determine the purpose behind the man's location, you can use. Ver we don't have investigation. That's not a thing. History is not a thing. Archit. Ooh, culture. Ooh. Uh, let's see, Arcana. We do have Arcana. Okay, so who is trained in either Arcana? Uh, I'm not gonna say investigation. I'm gonna say occultism. Mm, society. I got Percept society. You got society? Yeah. You're, tra you're trained in it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So. I have none of these. Yeah, no. What do you mean? Have academia, is that a count for anything? No. I have farming lore. You <laughs> have farming lore? Alright. Uh so Warren and I I guess will roll. Uh Warren, you'll you be using society, I'll be using knowledge engineering. Oh yeah, I do have perception. I forgot about that one. <laughs> okay. Oh never mind. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yep, nope. <laughs> 12 plus 7 for 19. God fucking god damn it. <laughs> okay, uh what was War Warren's uh society check? 1 plus 4. Jesus. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> you oh, want me no. to? Okay, so I can't go back and backspace. Oh, you bitch! Just remove it from the keyboard. <laughs> anyway, uh, what was Ron's uh, perception check? Twelve plus seven. Okay. That, uh, does Moira want to do anything? Hey, roll it. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Oh, wow. It's going through each one of ours individually. I like that. Stasrick examines the mirrors with his knowledge of engineering and architectural principles. He notices that the mirrors are positioned in a specific geometric pattern, suggesting a deliberate design. Okay, yes. Unfortunately, Warren's attempts to gather information about the mirror's purpose from his knowledge of societal practices and customs proves unsuccessful. He's unable to provide any insight. The mirrors reflect things. Ron's key. <laughs> Yes, they do reflect things, but why are they why do they reflect things? Wait, that sounded better in my head. Ron's keen observation skills allow him to notice some faint symbols etched into the under the frames of the mirrors. While he cannot decipher this me their meaning, he recognizes that they might hold some significance related to the mirror's purpose. Moira also notices the symbol on the mirror frames, but like Ron, she's unable to interpret their meaning. However, she does obse observe that the mirrors seem to reflect the surrounding environment with exceptional clarity, indicating uh, that they've been crafted with great precision. Do the symbols match the symbols that we found in the hologram room? <clears throat> 
Uh, what? Hold on, don't... It memorized my occultism check, though, so I guess I'll take it. <laughs> okay. We want to transcribe from the upon closer inspection, although we cannot make a direct correlation between specific symbols, there seems to be a similarity in overall style and design. This suggests a potential connection between the mirrors and celestial objects depicted on the star map. I like your pause for a second on our screen that says it's you compared it to the top. <laughs> <clears throat> it memorized my okay cool it's rolling for me okay that's not bad <laughs> do you want me to no. that's what you were doing last time I'll let you roll. Oh, oh, oh no, heart attack! Oh. Fine, you can roll for a roll for a scan. Fuck off, pal. Apologies for the network error. <laughs> Knowledge engineering check. I don't know. I kind of want to go with what you know. Fine, yeah, it's already been done, so. Well yeah, I'm. It. I'm going to. Okay, after a thorough examination, Stasbrick notices some similarities between the placement of the mirrors and the positions of certain celestial bodies on the star maps. While it is not an exact match, there are noticeable alignments and correlations between the positions of the mirrors and the celestial bodies depicted on the star maps. It suggests a deliberate arrangement that may hold some significance in relation to the stars and planets. Hmm. All right, let's see. Don't fail me now. It did not fail me now. Oh, no, don't do this. <laughs> no, you bastard. All right, I'm going to have to kill it and... Sazer carefully examines uh blah blah blah. I'll I'll wait for it to finish. Oh shit. Stazer carefully examines the layout of the mirrors and compares it to the symbols on the star maps. With his knowledge of occultism, he begins drawing connections between the two. He knows his arrangement, blah blah blah. How he realizes the mirrors in the chain. Ho! Oh, you will not believe this. We need to make the mirrors into certain alignments. I vote chaotic evil. <clears throat> oh no. It wants me to do a skill check. A hey. Anyone else want to take a crack at it? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Something's... Ugh. I'm going to admit something is not exactly right. Because I rolled an 8. <laughs> Total. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like, an 8? Plus your, you know... It would seem that Ron's mystical curse has been passed on to me. For this roll. I didn't do shit. You're the one who put the doohickey in the dingle bop instead of the dangamarang. Put the mirror back, you fool. We need to align them properly. Can I use a uh, nature check to remember what some of the uh, celestial bodies look like in the sky? To try to match it? Hmm. Not on God. I, think that's, I think that's still occultism, but I don't know. I rolled an 8 minus 1 for my engineering. My fucking god. <laughs> I 
So you want to use the nature skill to what exactly? To try to recall knowledge of the celestial uh, sky. I don't know if that would... I think that would be lore astrology. Alright, then never mind. Astronomy? Astronomy. astronomy. It's called astrology for some reason in this system. Oh, you are oh. trying to know the astrology. Okay, this time, this time, after bonking my fucking head against a wall, uh, I got 20. God, fucking damn it. <clears throat> With the law engineering, check a 20, sus. Um, what? <laughs> With a lore engineering check of 20, Stasbrick carefully studies the mirrors and their placement, considering the pattern, symbols, and his knowledge of engineering principles. After some adjustments and calculations, he is able to align the mirrors in what seems to be the correct configuration. As the mirrors shift into place, a soft hum fills the chamber, and beams of light start to converge at a central point. The room is bathed in a, bathed in a mesmerizing glow as the mirrors work in unison. Projecting the beams towards a specific spot. <laughs> oh god, this drink is making me gassy. Uh, suddenly, the beams intersect at a small pedestal in the center of the chamber, revealing a shimmering, translucent crystal resting on top. It emits a faint, otherworldly energy, pulsating with an enchanting glow. Uh, apparently, we all fucking missed this pedestal in the center because there was <laughs> mirrors? No, I'm not gonna touch it. Lick it. Lick that toad. Lick that toad. Jesus Christ, is she already running up and down the halls? Stazer carefully retrieves his, the tongs from his repair kit and uses them to handle the mysterious crystal. As he lifts it from the pedestal, a tingling sensation runs through the tongs, indicating a, the unique properties of the crystal. It feels cool to the touch and emits a gentle, soothing energy. The crystal is translucent, with a faint shimmer that seems to shift and change as if reflecting distant galaxies. It pulses softly, resonating with a mysterious power. Salzburg examines the crystal closely, observing its shape, color, or a and any markings or patterns it may have. He tries to discern its purpose, properties, or any potential significance it might hold. So, uh... Hmm. Hold on, let me... I mean, I think I have something in my kit for this. Uh... Maybe even 19 will help? I don't like that this is becoming a one-man show for me. Can someone else make a skill check? <laughs> Why am I solving everything again? No, this is a sorry all over you again. have all of the skills, and <laughs> I do not. <laughs> I have yeah, every single um... fucking skill. Actually, I don't have every single skill. Actually, uh, on this version of Sazrik, I do not have diplomacy because I gave him uh, computers instead. Sure, I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? Hmm. I have eight int. <laughs> oh no, it was not fifteen. Hold on, it was thirteen. Thirteen plus uh, six. I will use my knowledge of occultism. Yeah, I, I geared my guy to like surviving in the wilderness. Yeah, we we thought we were doing an exploration thing, not a. Meanwhile, I give my guy We're every all just camper thieves. <laughs> Meanwhile, I made my guy a medic and general like scholar type of thing. 
So basically, I'm going to be solving everything, and if something jumps out at us, you guys are going to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> Stazer carefully studies the mysterious crystal, drawing upon his knowledge of occult practices and esoteric phenomena. He tries to recall any relevant information or connections that might shed light on the crystal's purpose. While Stazerick is not able to determine the crystal's exact purpose, he senses that it possesses a strong metaphysical energy. Its composition and the faint shimmering patterns suggest a strong connection to celestial forces or otherworldly realms. It is likely that the crystal holds significant power, but its specific function and meaning remain elusive. Okay, well, I can't exactly determine what the hell it's used for. So, uh, I guess I'll just put it in my backpack and I... Maybe we should go check out that chamber. <clears throat> the porpoise. <laughs> Whoops. I typed that as a... Uh, 24? Is that what your nature check is? <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck, hold on! <laughs> hold on! <laughs> hold on, chat GPT! What is your nature check? It is a plus one. Okay, well, they memorize your. Okay, we'll take it. Moira examines the crystal, observing its color, texture, and any natural patterns or formations within it. Drawing upon her understanding of natural forces, she considers the crystal's potential connections to the environment and its possible role in the ecosystem. As Moira focuses on the crystal, she notices subtle vibrations emanating from it, resonating within the, with the ambient energy of the surrounding area. This suggests a harmonious relationship between the crystal and the natural elements of the world. The crystal's luminescence and pristine condition indicate that it has been carefully preserved, perhaps with a specific purpose related to the balance and vitality of the environment. While Moira cannot determine the crystal's exact function or origin, her assessment aligns with the notion that it holds significance in the natural order of things. It may have been used by the ancient civilization to channel or harness natural energies for various purposes, such as ecological balance, weather manipulation, or even communication with the celestial realms. <clears throat> uh, huh. To the, I mean, we could take the crystal back to the Zerlon. Oh, so I just realized it had us do a mysterious crystal and there's seven chambers. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go supersonic. We need to find the <laughs> yes, this is a ca guys. This is a chaos emeralds. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> This thing has given us a campaign, a, a dungeon. Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> what? Where's my guns? <laughs> the only Sonic game I've Warren, really Warren has the gun. The Warren yeah. has a gun. Warren is yeah. Sonic the. Er, Warren is Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> Maria. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> so what does that make me? Oh, I'm Tails. That's right. I'm obviously Tails because I'm the knowledge junkie. Uh, Moira is. Okay, and then uh, that would make Ron <laughs> Knuckles. Ron, your Knuckles. Good job. Ron has definitely the strength to be Knuckles. He has 16 strength. Oh. 16 strength and con and 14 dex. Well, would I be Dr. Eggman? Stasrik has a full beard. Stasrik is an Eggman y name. You're both kind of Germany. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it. I've made Eggman, y'all. I made a good aligned <laughs> Eggman. He, he saw the error of his ways. Anyway. That is true. Sonic Boom was absolutely fucking amazing. It's like Eggman only exists to give Sonic something to do. <laughs> Like, Sonic Boom was the Sonic the Hedgehog series on Chaotic Neutral. <laughs> they, they did. They had some episodes where he just wasn't, uh... He, like, there was one episode he where... Do nothing. Like, they were retiring and stuff, and Sonic was so bored and fuck, he was... I remember one episode where I think Eggman's only goal of the thing was to get something that he ordered through the mail. 
and every single citizen of the island was pissing him off <laughs> in some stupid fucking way by preventing him from getting his goddamn mail. And it's like that's that's an that's a relatable Eggman experience right there. Like the the clerk at the postal office was slow as shit. Uh, someone lost, I think someone lost the tracking number or something, and then when he went to try to, uh, when he started yelling, Sonic and friends started thinking that he was, like, attacking the town, and it was, and then he got attacked. I think that's what happened. I don't know. I might be misremembering things. I probably am, but either way, that's the type of show Sonic Boom is. Oh, and especially with Knuckles threatening to punch a baby on accident. <laughs> or no, he was threatening to blend the baby. That's right. Cause... That's not better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they were talking about blending something to feed the baby, but the wording made it sound vague. And so Knuckles was... <laughs> Knuckles says, I don't think, I don't think we should blend him. <laughs> it's like... No, we're going to blend food for him. <laughs> oh my god. No, Sonic Sonic Boom is a fucking excellent show and it's on Netflix right now as far as I know. All right, to anyone who's watching this, not that anybody is, but Sonic Boom is fucking amazing and you should totally watch it. It's also very meta. Anyway, uh so shall we go? Shall we go behind the ancient mirror passage? Warren, should I shove you down there? I shoved Moira last time. <laughs> or does Warren want to just take point? I'll take point. Okay. Okay, I shove Stas. <clears throat> You motherfucker, make me an athletics check versus my fortitude DC. Of 13? <laughs> 54, but if we account for the fact that I accidentally typed two sixes, eight. Eight? Yeah, fuck off. You know what, I'm going to make my own athletics check. What's your fortitude DC? Uh, you don't want to know. It's, like, really high. What is it? It's like 100. It's, eight. it's 18. It's 18? I got a 19, because I have a plus 6 to athletics. I have a plus 6. Why are you freaking bragging? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I shove you, fucker. Okay. You stole my roll. <laughs> As Warren takes point and leads the way through the hidden passage behind the mirror, Ron playfully tries to shove Stasrik forward. However, Stasrik quickly reacts and reverses the attempt, playfully shoving Ron forward instead. The two friends engage in a friendly pushing match. Just if you we're not fighting, honey, we're just I will playing. turn this party around. The two friends engage in a friendly pushing match as they make their way deeper into the passage. Their playful antics add a touch of lightheartedness to the exploration, boosting the party's spirits as they venture into the unknown. <laughs> you motherfucker. We're trying to fucking right. kill each other and it's saying it's playful. <laughs> <laughs> friends! Why would you do this to each other? That's the thing, I think you're forgetting. I, I actually did- I purposefully gave Stasrik as much strength as he could. <laughs> I, I have no dexterity. I have no armor class, but it, I will punch a motherfucker into next week. And then I'll heal them. You know why I'm losing this fight? Why? I threw my apple away earlier. It doesn't counter <laughs> doctors anymore. <laughs> oh, 
Let's be Honda. Be Honda Civic. Oh, come on. Don't, don't, no. Nothing. A blinking black bar. No, don't say this is going to stop you. You motherfucker. Of all the things we enter in. No. What's behind door number two? A network error. <laughs> it didn't even take the response. Correct. You know, we haven't been checking for traps this whole time, and I'm betting it's just forgetting to add any traps. Don't mention them or else it'll start to. As the party proceeds through the hidden passage, they find themselves in a large, dimly lit chamber. The air is heavy with a musty scent. And oh, oh god! I didn't realize it was going to give me a word salad. <clears throat> they find themselves in a large, dimly lit chamber. The air is heavy with a musty scent and the sound of their footsteps that goes off the stone walls. The chamber is filled with ancient artifacts, statues, and ornate carvings that depict mysterious symbols and scenes from an unfamiliar culture. In the center of the chamber stands a raised platform atop which, which rests a large, intricately designed artifact. It appears to be a pedestal or altar, adorned with glowing crystals and enigmatic symbols. The artifact emits a self-pulsating light, casting an otherworldly glow across the chamber. Surrounding the pedestal are several smaller pedestals, each holding a crystal of its own. The crystals vary in shape, size, size, shape, and color, exuding an aura of energy and power. The room is filled with an ethereal atmosphere, hinting at the mystical and ancient nature of the artifacts before them. The party stands in awe as they take in the sight, their curiosity peaks by the unknown secrets that lie within this chamber. The air feels charged with anticipation as they prepare to unravel the mysteries and discover the true purpose of these enigmatic artifacts. Okay, Hal, can you summarize that in five words? <laughs> if it breaks on me... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm happy. <laughs> I think Hal just told you to fuck off. <laughs> Hal has... The AI has made amazing counters to everything we try to do as a shitpost. Like, like, why the hell is it... Why the hell is it the taller in the day? It makes it even better. <laughs> This thing's a better DM than I would ever be, and I've and I've had ten years of goddamn experience. <clears throat> yeah, and then I purposefully misinterpret them for malicious purposes for shenanigans. That's fine. There's too much fluff in this, honestly. Yeah, but we did ask. Totally, uh... We did tell it that we did want like a campaign of exploration and stuff. Wait, new question. Can you summarize Ron in five words? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Impulsive. Awesome. Stupid. Let's stupid isn't in there, so that's that's a win. Ron cannot be that stupid. He's my eight int. What? Oh, you're using alternate rule bullshit. No. You're a halfling. How how do you have a penalty to int? What do I? <laughs> Halflings Wait. get a penalty to strength, not int. Oh, I did copy an old character sheet. You that was before we talked over that stupid rule. Okay. Okay, I see. Impulsive though is definitely right. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. Um... You know what? Hold on. Describe the altar in the middle... ...of the room. <clears throat> Do 
The altar in the middle of the room is an imposing structure adorned with intricate carvings and symbols, radiating an aura of mystique and power. Its polished surface reflects the ambient light, casting an ethereal glow across the chamber. <sighs> well, maybe I should put. Maybe we should try to put this crystal on the altar. What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, is there yes. Indentation, but a different word. It's like indentation, but I'm thinking of a different word. <laughs> I'm just burping all the time. Oh, what is it? Uh, relief? Relief! There it is. Upon closer inspection, you notice a carved recess on the recess. There we go on the surface of the altar that appears to be a perfect fit for the crystal you possess. Well, here goes nothing. Self destruct activated. <laughs> Well, don't just leave us hanging, you motherfucker. Come on. As Thazra carefully places the crystal into the carved recess on the altar, a soft glow emanates from the crystal, casting a gentle light in the room. The crystal fits snugly into the relief as if it was meant to be there. As the crystal makes contact with the altar, a low humming sound fills the air, growing louder and more intense with each passing moment. The room begins to vibrate slightly, and you can feel a surge of energy pulsating through the crystal. Something significant is about to happen. Get down, everybody! Take cover! This is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, okay. <clears throat> As a halfling, all of you are covered. Thank you. <laughs> they huddle behind large stone pillars, crates, or any structures that can provide some protection. Their hearts are right. What fucking happens? <laughs> <laughs> Something happens next. You motherfucker, don't you cop out! <laughs> no. I refuse. No, nope, refresh. <laughs> Even it doesn't know what happens next. Ezra. As the party takes over a blinding flash of light, erupts some. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna wait for it to finish. <clears throat> As the party takes cover, a blinding flash of light erupts from the altar, engulfing the room with the air crackles with energy and a powerful surge of magic pulses through the chamber. When the light subsides, they find themselves in a completely different location. They now stand in a vast otherworldly landscape surrounded by towering rock formations, glowing plants, and an alien sky filled with color. Vibrant colors. The air is thick with an unfamiliar energy, and the ground beneath their feet feels strangely solid, yet unfamiliar. It becomes apparent that the crystal's placement in the relief on the altar has triggered a powerful teleportation spell, transporting them into this new and unknown realm. As they take so in not. their surrounding... We can't even go back to the fucking dungeon? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. We're on another planet now? <laughs> what the fuck? You motherfuckers picked the worst room to explore. I did not stock up on enough bark. Mm -hmm. yeah. well Going rock. into it. A... Got some rock candy here. Whoop. You know, now those aliens are going to think, since we're not, not going to uh, be able to return that, they're just going to be like, oh my god, it really is cursed. Everyone who goes there dies. <laughs> <laughs> that might be it. I mean, you actually might be onto something, Warren. Maybe they didn't die. Maybe they're all just here. Well, then who keeps hiding the fucking crystal back in the mirrors they're activating this yeah we didn't 
No, we didn't check the other rooms. Although I don't think any of us expected Map this to happen. Now blocked off from us. Motherfucker. I pinned that message and everything <laughs> to try to give us a point of return, but nope, we cannot return. Choose your own adventure. You only got one choice. Hmm. Okay, so at the end of this session, by the way, I'm gonna ask him if we, if this thing if we've leveled up because uh, I think we're long due for a level up. It's been two sessions. Okay. Um. Hmm. What do we ask it? Sell? Ask it to explore? Okay. So what do we know about this? Uh, it's pretty much looks exactly like the other planet, though. Well, it said it's more rock than four, so. Oh yeah. Uh, anybody got? We're in the rock now. We just, we just left grass. <laughs> now we're at the rock place now. Would the chamber of mirrors be considered rock type or grass type? That was the fairy type, Jim. Yeah, you. S yeah. Does anyone have any ideas? I was still checking out the chambers and the ruins, and then all of a sudden we got, you know, yeah. teleported to a goddamn new planet. Maybe we should try yeah, to find. Put it in the fucking relief. <clears throat> I didn't know what would happen. Um, you, Stasrik will point at Ron. You have made me far more reckless than I have previously been. <laughs> and we're already on planet number two. You're fucking welcome. Possibly, we might just be on the other side of the original planet. Looking well, at the sky. Are there multiple moons? Oh, oh, yeah, that's a good that's idea. That's it. That is a good idea. Hold on. Let me see if I can match it up with the. the... Okay, it's a new world. It is a new world. Ah, oh, motherfucker. Hold on. <laughs> Wait. That's what we're. Oh, okay. Oh, we have to observe the surroundings. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I look up at the sky. I'm just gonna look up at the alien. <clears throat> As the party gazes up at the sky, they behold a mesmerizing sight. The celestial canopy is adorned with intricate alien patterns, forming constellations unlike anything they have seen before. This th I think this already happened before. Anyway, the stars shimmer and twinkle in vibrant hues, casting a surreal glow across the landscape. Okay, so there are stars. Uh, the patterns seem to shift and evolve, creating an ever-changing tapestry of light and color. The party may notice unfamiliar shapes, symbols, and arrangements of stars that defy earthly interpretations. They may try to discern any patterns or meanings in the constellations, seeking connections to their own experiences or the knowledge they have gathered so far. These celestial wonders serve as a constant reminder of the otherworldly nature of their current realm and the mysteries that await them. No, give me that star map. You're clearly too stupid for it. I'll try and see if it matches up. Fuck off! Ye. <laughs> you have been tainting my ability to concentrate. Uh. Hey. Hey, Stasrick. Hey. What? Hey. Ron? Hey. Taint these nuts. <laughs> Got him. Okay. Uh, cultism. Ba -da -do. Hmm, not bad. Seventeen equal what? Thirteen. Hold on. <laughs> All 
All right. Stasrek meticulously compares the patterns in the sky and the, the star maps he possesses. With his keen eye and knowledge of occultism, he starts identifying familiar constellations and aligning them with the corresponding symbols and coordinates on the star maps. As he matches the stars, Stasrek begins to unravel some of the mysteries hidden within the alien patterns. He discovers connections between the positions of certain stars and their significance in the ancient lore he has studied. It becomes apparent that the celestial configurations hold valuable information about the nature of this world, its history, and potentially even its future. Though the task is challenging and requires further study, Stasberg's efforts provide the party with valuable insights and clues, blah 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 blah. Okay. Can someone else make a check? The game says I'm wanting, but well, I, I tried to yell at me. <laughs> Like, I offered a nature or survival check. Okay, fine, Ron. You go ahead and make me what What check? Oh, well, fuck a star map check. <sighs> fuck a star map check, okay. Fuck in. I'm not gonna fuck the star map. What? <laughs> Where the hell is your mind? <laughs> Isn't that what you just what said? Occultism. Occultism. Fuck in, not fuck a. Oh. That's a three minus one. <laughs> <laughs> that is another thing of chat GPT versus uh, a real DM is a real DM would make sure that everyone is involved in the story. Not uh, Sazric, 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 Sazric. Other, uh, Ron, eager to contribute to the party's knowledge, tries to make sense of the celestial patterns and their occult significance. However, his understanding of the esoteric and metaphysical is limited, and he struggles to grasp the complexities of the cosmic symbols above. Despite Ron's efforts, his attempt to further the party's knowledge through occultism doesn't yield any significant results. His interpretations and conclusions may be misguided or lacking in accuracy. It becomes apparent that Ron's expertise lies in other areas and the party might need to rely on other sources or individuals for deeper insights into the mysteries of this world. That's a polite way to call me stupid. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiot. I could, I could do a nature <laughs> check to check out the surroundings. All right. Sixteen plus three. Nice. Motherfucker. Keyboarding is hard, man. 91! <laughs> That's a really good nature check. <clears throat> I've, I've learned everything but all of nature. Warren, drawing on his knowledge of the natural world, carefully observes the surrounding environment. He takes note of the flora, fauna, and geographical features, paying attention to any peculiarities or patterns. With his keen eye, Warren, Warren notices subtle signs and clues that indicate the unique aspects of the alien ecosystem. Warren's nature check reveals the interesting details about the local flora and fauna. He recognizes some similarities to Earth's ecosystems, but also notices distinct adaptations and evolutionary traits that set this world apart. His observations contribute to the party's understanding of the natural elements of their surroundings, allowing them to navigate and interact with the environment more effectively. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Is there any bark for Ron? <laughs> yeah, I'm <gonna laughs> the nearest tree. You're gonna bite the nearest tree. <laughs> yep. Better be tasty and make me glow. All right, what's your survival check? So close to being a 17, and then the die just kind of eased up. <laughs> you find a few edible berries and small tubers. While it may not be a bountiful harvest, gathered food provides a modest supplement to the party's provisions, ensuring that they have sustenance for the time being. Apparently, berries is the only thing you guys are willing to uh, Apparently, no. That's the Other only thing you're Ryan. finding. Hold on. So if people disappear within the ruins, and we ended up here... Moira, see if you can find any tracks. Perception. I found my feet. 
Nat one. Try here. Try resetting the skill. Try try a reset. Roll again. Yeah, that's a four. That's a four. It says fourteen, but that the four is what's on the surface. Hold on. I also rolled a f what the hell? Maybe the die is broke. Yeah. Alright, just here. Roll the skill. Or roll the perception itself. I don't even know how to do that. It's in uh, offense. And then it has like a die symbol on perception. What the hell? How come you're... She can't roll her... Uh... What? Oh, hold up. I've been hitting the roll Do you actions? What the fuck? How are you... Anyway, hold on. I gotta pee. Reroll again anyway. <clears throat> I'll be right back, y'all. Entertain everybody. Is anybody there? Nope. Yeah. Hello? Okay. <laughs> also, I rolled a six. The, the thing stopped hiccuping. What's the six plus eight? That'd be a fourteen. Oh, wait. Uh, I don't know. I can actually get this. I'm going to get this in myself. Just throw the word poop in anywhere. <laughs> Where the hell is the equal button on here? Oh. Below the plus? Yeah. Do I have to do that? Okay. Uh, okay. Hey! What? what are you doing? I have to roll, so I typed it in. Oh, you froze it. And and I broke it. it. You and broke, I broke it. it. I carefully scanned the blank. Hold on, let's let's have it regenerate. Oh! With a perception check of 14, Moria manages to spot a few faint tracks that indicate the presence of small indigenous creatures. The tracks appear to be from some kind of quadrupedal animal, poss possibly herbivorous in nature. While the tracks aren't fresh or particularly distinct, they provide a clue that there are native creatures in the vicinity. So you weren't exactly clear on you wanting me to find uh, tracks on life or tracks on young. Well, I mean, we could probably follow these. Maybe they, uh, maybe we can hunt them for food. Or maybe they'll help us in some way. I don't know. Who has better survival? Uh, it should be me. Well, I have plus three. Plus five. Uh, yo, Do I have survival? I think I also have. Six. I have a plus five as well. I in survival. Have okay. Well, I'll aid her. Shit. Uh, maybe we should take my aid roll. <laughs> <sighs> no. I already said I would aid you. I got a 23 on aiding. <laughs> that still won't be enough to help me. Alright, what's Ron's, uh, check? 18 plus 5. No, Oops. No, no, that's an aid check. An AIDS check. What? Yep. What's Moira's, uh... My bonus is plus six. You saw what I So, you got a plus eight. No. 
Well, oh, yeah. God damn it. Yeah, no, I rolled a one. Ron carefully examines the treks left behind by the indigenous creatures, providing guidance and disappointing Mary as she attempts to follow them. With Ron's aid, Moira feels more confident in her trekking abilities and begins to follow the trail. However, despite their best efforts, Moira's own survival check of nine proves to be a critical failure. She struggles to interpret the tracks accurately and ends up veering off course, losing the trail entirely. The tracks become increasingly difficult to discern, and eventually, Moira is unable to determine the direction in which the creatures went. The party finds themselves at a loss, unable to track the creatures further. It seems that the trail has gone cold, and they will need to rely on other means to find food or explore their surroundings. What notable sights are off in the distance? As the party scans the horizon, they notice that- oh no. Uh, you're gonna give us seven choices, and we're gonna pick one and fucking instantly go to a new planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is, okay. Ooh, glittery waves. No, only five this time. Oh, there you go. There's a distant city. Shit. That's probably civilization. 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 Ta okay. As the party scans the horizon, they notice several noticeable, notable sites in the distance. The towering mountains. Majestic peaks rise in the distance, their snow-capped summits glistening in the sunlight. The mountains create a stunning backdrop, their sheer size and ruggedness hinting at hidden wonders within. The dense forests. Lush and vibrant forests stretch out, their dense foliage providing a haven for various wildlife. The trees form a green canopy that seems to beckon adventurers to explore their depths. A glittering lake. A large, shimmering lake reflects the sky above, its pristine waters creating a serene and tranquil atmosphere. It appears to be a perfect spot for rest and contemplation. 4. The Ruined Structures Scattered remnants of ancient structures dot the landscape. Their weathered walls and crumbling architecture stand as a testament to a forgotten civilization. These ruins hold the promise of hidden treasures and mysteries waiting to be discovered. 5. A Distant City Farmer in the distance, a cityscape rises on the horizon, its silhouette indicating a hub of activity and civilization. The city may hold answers, resources, and potential allies for the party. Well, what do we want to explore first? Also, why am I being party leader again? I didn't want, no, someone else take over. I think we're going to the city. What? Yeah, to the city. To the city? All right. All right. Although the forest do have bark. <laughs> I'm not healing you again. You know what? The canopies are green. They're probably boring ass normal trees. They won't make me glow. Wow. Jesus. Guys, I think we just entered into a different type of yeah, campaign fighting. all of a we're sudden. Chapter 2. <laughs> Hold on, we still have an hour left. This can't be Chapter 2. <laughs> no. Or do you mean just the word salad that's before us? The ending of it made it sound like a Chapter 2. <laughs> oh. Oh, it, it, yeah. As the party sets off towards the distant city, they embark on a journey filled with anticipation and curiosity. The path ahead may be challenging, but their skills and determination but with their skills and determination they make progress through varied landscapes and encounters. Along the way they traverse dense forests. Uh, I wish we would know what those encounters were. Oh yeah. Hmm. It's like just skipping all the like fighting or whatever. <laughs> there was a bandit ambush? Uh, excuse me, I would like to participate in fighting I think we have to pick one. Friendly encounters! Whoa. Wow. Oh, Holy wow, fuck! <laughs> hold, hold, hold on, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> okay, bandit I'm gonna stop ambush. it there. Ambush. Or... Number two, my lord, or we could have it pick for us. Or we could just roll one 
Okay, yeah, habit pick number two. <laughs> I like number eight. Okay, okay, hold up. Okay, as a party, we have to decide. Okay. Eight? Did I, I hear two. Okay, we're gonna roll. We're gonna roll uh, an eight. No, no, no. A D8. Other people can vote. I'm just gonna roll D8. Okay. So what are we? What are we? What are we eight. feeling? You got eight. I'm I'm just voting eight. Okay. Uh, poop rat. Uh. Fuck! I want to do the bandit ambush. We haven't had any combat. Yeah. Yet. That's kind of why I was thinking too. How about let's do two and then we could go to eight. Cause I I I'm starting to get the feeling that some some people are getting stabby. I'm getting shooty. <laughs> Hold on, what was it in Star Wars? No, it wasn't. Where was it in? Where? Which campaign was it where we didn't have a combat session for so long, and then every some suddenly everyone wanted to kill things? That was Star Wars, wasn't it? I feel like it was Star Wars because it's yes. kept getting us out of combat while everyone else built fucking fighters. Yeah, especially uh, our fucking, our walking tank. It's like you had, Ula, that was like a super shooter, and it's like the one time I did not build a heal bot. And I was like, oh, hey, wait, I'm wait. not a heal bot. I'm not even remotely able to heal and stuff. I'm here to come and kill and shoot things and just start blasting. And then they're just sort of going, yeah, and I just finished up before we had to do anything. You're welcome. And I'm just like... Well, that's because Isari did this thing called hacking the system. <laughs> Speaking of, in that same session where we all got shooty, that same session where we all got shooty, we infiltrated the uh, the base of that rich douchebag, right? Isn't that the I one where he think, had those robots? I think so. Oh, yeah, and then I also solved... Yeah. I also solved yeah, combat. Solved <laughs> I solved that, too, by gassing the... Yeah, by gassing the... Uh, barracks while everyone was and sleeping and then after you already had all the robots hacked i think another thing was yeah the, the moon wasn't actually a moon it was uh oh, hold up a two star starship so technically you could have looked at it and just been like oh we could just destroy this entire thing by just looking at it funny and i'm like no we actually want to save some people on this planet and you're like fine yeah, that was our very first encounter. It was like, you're, we're supposed to rescue the hostages, and I'm just like, life support shut down? <laughs> anyway, uh, side, yeah. Eric was thinking about taking one of the starships to blow up the other starship. <laughs> we're not good heroes. As the party continues their journey, they find themselves in a secluded area, surrounded by dense vegetation and rocky terrain. Suddenly, a group of bandits emerges from the shadows, blocking the party's path forward. The bandits, armed with weapons and wearing tattered clothing, wear sly grins on their faces as they encircle the party. The bandit leader steps forward, running a scar running across his cheek, and demands that the party hand over their valuables and surrender without a fight. His voice carries a hint of menace, and it's clear that these bandits are not to be taken lightly. Uh, six bandits, okay. Stazrik will just crack his knuckles. Cut down to size. My gun. Yeah, let's roll for uh, let's let's do some initiative rolls. Okay, so Ron will. Uh, Ron will, I guess, roll Intimidation for his initiative. I'd rather not. Huh? I'd rather not. Well, you just said... That's just, that's on the side. I'm rolling my Perception. Fuck you. <laughs> I am at a nat 20 plus 8. Oh, shit. Okay. Trying to get rid of seven points to my initiative. Mm -hmm. 
Bandits A. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, what, 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 what? No. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> no, 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 no. It... Hold up. Oh, God. <sighs> All right. Uh, so... Run. <laughs> you got to run? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, what was ten, run? 10 plus, 10 plus 7. 10 plus 7 equals 17. All right, I'll roll. Uh, Yeah, I'm not going to be going for a bit. That's fine. You're just playing not the strong. Okay. Uh, Warren, what was yours? 14 plus 5. Moira? 20 plus 8. Oh shit, that's right. Damn. 87, yep. 87, 87 yeah. yeah. And what about Vino? Vino works on my initiative. Oh wow! Wow. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> okay, guys. You know what? Uh, GPT just redeemed itself by listing it. Oh, oh wait. Hold up. Oh, uh, nope. It fucked up. Why is the bandit leader? Oh, maybe they delayed the turn? Or they just like, no. go first? Well, we maybe would go first. Maybe it's the leader, so he'll just go first always. Okay. So it's Moira's turn. Uh, hold on. I'm going to... What is, hold up, I got, I'm gonna first kill this, because I'm gonna bring up some things. What is here? Oh, that's right, that's what I was working on. I was working on actually making non-human characters. Anyway. So, first it's Moira. Then we got Warren. Then Ron. Then Stasrik. Better safe than sorry. Uh, also, then... can you also put our No. Uh, bandit leader. Then oh, bandit B. Uh, then bandit B. No, bandit E. <laughs> God damn it. Bandit C, and then bandit Becca. A. <laughs> and then Becca. Okay, bring this back up. All right, uh, it's Moira's turn. Um, I'm assuming move towards one of the bandits. Uh, let's go towards Bandit B. Okay. And then short sword for 11, 4 plus 7. Make two strikes. Make two melee strikes. Yeah. Okay, well, what's your second attack? Okay. Well, I wanted you to catch it once I read Oh, one. yeah. Okay, so the first one is seven plus, or four plus seven. And then second attack is... Better than my first. What the fuck? Twelve plus three. Hmm. Whoops. Bandit hashtag. Boat. What? <laughs> They both hit. <laughs> sure, okay. um, what are your damage rolls? Okay, so it was five plus one. I don't know if you have to actually put in the plus thing for me, but we can do it as a. Okay. So five plus one, and the other one was three plus one. How 
the fuck? Three plus one? Slashing? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, hold on. What, what, oh. Okay. It is now. Who was second? I already forgot. Me, yeah. Think Warren. Okay. What? What the hell? is now Warren's turn. Okay, please proceed with Warren's turn, okay. I will shoot the uh, bandit leader, then reload and shoot again. Do you have any special reloads? Uh, hold on. He's not moving at all, so he probably be able to reload one. Oh yeah, he is, okay. With it, what weapon are you using with the what gun are you using with a uh, Warren? A clan pistol. Okay. Also, uh, keep in mind that my What's your attack roll? Both so their DC should be low. Why would their DC be low? Oh yeah, oh no, yeah, the, mean, the AC, on, yeah. On the All right, first one is... Uh, six plus nine, so fifteen. Fifteen, okay. Second is seventeen plus four. Seventeen plus four, okay, so a nice twenty one. Mother, okay. Seventeen plus four equals twenty one. Does either attack hit the bandit leader? Okay, second attack will hit. Alright. His AC is above 15, yeah. Alright, uh, how much damage does Warren do? 5 plus 1, 6. 5 piercing and 1 con uh, concurrence. Okay, it is now, I believe, Ron's turn. Yeah. yeah. Ron will stride to the bandit leader. He will raise a shield, and he will strike with a sickle. Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. Do not determine I don't have Ron's an act. actions. <laughs> okay. Ron oh, will stride. <laughs> yeah, I like how it determined your target too. Yeah. What's your final action? I will strike with my sickle. I got sixteen plus six. S cycle. 16 plus 6? Yep. Whoops. Okay. Wait a minute. Oh, plus 8. It's 24. Jesus. Well, it's still not a critical hit. We know that much. Anyway, uh... Do we? How much damage? Well, yeah, because, uh... uh oh, yeah. Uh, remember, because Warren rolled a 15, and the computer said that the 15 did not hit the bandit leader. Oh. Okay. I hit for 6 damage. 6 slashing. Nope. I'd like to attack 5 more times. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Okay. So. It's Gosric's turn. Gosric will do this instead of. Yeah, but at the same time, I kind of want to. Oh, that's right. This thing has limited responses, I think. I think this thing has limited responses per hour because I'm on the free. Oh, yeah. I do have to determine that, don't I? Okay, anyway. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do with Stazer? Considering I do not have any uh, ranged weapons. So that'd be silly. Why would I... I thought I have ranged weapons. I'll take that. That's not my perception that I'm rolling. Okay. Anyway. <sighs> Which one were you going for? You were going for Bandit E? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it seems Warren and, uh, I think Warren and, uh, Ron can take care of the bandit leader. Oh, if my roll gets very better, I know I Was that plus six? Yeah, it was a plus six. Yeah, okay. Hey, there we go. It knows about critical hits. Nice. All right. So. Wait, if a 15 missed, how is 25 exceeding it by 10? No, that was the bandit leader. Oh, shit. <laughs> Stasuk just... <laughs> so I made Stasuk to be a pacifist, uh, by the way. Yeah. Passing a fist through your face. Passing a fist, yeah. Passing a wow. fist through their face. Do I have any... I don't have any charisma on this version of Stasuk, so I guess I'll make an athletics check. Uh... You know what, I... Anyway, Morty, um... Hmm. I don't know if I'm... They said they spread out. Oh, Holy know. fuck! They must have closed in at some point! Yeah, apparently. <laughs> We're all standing huddling together. Okay, now I have to remember to minus five on this. Listen, listen, y'all. Um... Okay, and now it is... That's it for the party, so now it is Bandit D's turn. Oh, and I'm also going to eliminate Bandit E from the initiative. You may now control Bandit D. Oh! <laughs> okay, then. Uh, Bandit D is just gonna <laughs> fuck right off. Okay. <laughs> so. What will Bandit D do? Hmm. Run away. Wait, we 
can't let them escape. Hold on. All right, does a Ooh. 21 hit? That actually hits me. All right. Four hundred and sixty-five damage. <laughs> Fucking just a red mist. Ow! Okay. Eight slashing damage. <laughs> All right. Holy, what the, ho hold on. No, 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 It's a good thing I raised my shield, or else that first attack would still hit. <laughs> okay, that's a little bit better. What? Uh, let's let's just ignore numbers, it. Okay. Let's just ignore that one, okay? Uh, so it still needs. Okay, so it's Bandit B's turn. He gonna run away? Ooh, okay, a melee strike against Moira does. So let me Uh. Okay, I'm 15 in. Why would I It doesn't. It doesn't. Hold on. Okay. Uh, shall we move on then? I guess. Bandit C's turn. Hey, I mean, combat is still slow as hell, even with the ch the AI. <laughs> yeah, it was having to be a rule floor with it, which is like, stop cheating. Holy fuck, that thing has a better attack than the leader. That That's sad. <laughs> what? Yeah. Damn. New leader, Bandit C. <laughs> Bandit. Hey. Does, does Ron get hit still? This is blocked by my shield. Oh, that's... No, he has one. Oh, does he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's oh, right. Did. And then... Oh, you know what? <laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> Bandit C hesitated, so... No, you should say apologies for the oversight, and then... <laughs> 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 Apologies, you were correct. He only had one. <laughs> Hold on.
Oh, well. Hey. I did that. Miss. Nice. That is a miss. I even kept the previous roll this time. Hold up. No, we just had Bandit Aid move, didn't we? No, no, we didn't. Ouch! <laughs> uh. That's your job. Okay, guys, I, uh, don't want to offend anybody, but, ow. Uh. Oh, God, taking six damage, that hurt, actually. You know, it's the medic's job to keep us all safe, so it's good if they go down first. Oh, right, yes. <laughs> That's damage we're not taking. Right. <laughs> Another one? <laughs> Uh, woohoo! Chat GPT. Oh God, I'm gonna have to freaking. I'm gonna have to use battle medicine on myself to. <sighs> That's better. Okay. Al is apologizing too much. It makes me sad. Fuck off, <laughs> you <laughs> bitch. <laughs> okay, it is back to Moira, I believe. All right, yeah, it's back to Moira. All right. Uh, which, which bandit was like going after me? Uh, was that B? E. Uh, e. No, no. E was going, going after you. Dead. Yeah, yeah. Stasrik just came by and RKO'd his ass. Uh, uh, bandit uh, three melee attacks to bandit beat. No, not three. Oh, that's gonna be dark healer. What? It's not first action to make three melee attacks. Okay, 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 hold on. <laughs> it's going to think that, oh, I can attack three times with one action? Alright, let's just not attack. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's your first one? Okay. Uh, 20, that's 20 plus 7. Okay. I don't know if I can still continue with my new game. <laughs> you know what, we're going to change it back to first action. This isn't 5e, okay? We're not gonna just spam attack rolls here. I'm sorry. Apologies for the oversight. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's the that's the title of this video. Yep. Apologies for the oversight. Uh, how much damage? Uh, assuming it's a critical damage. It is. Uh, it'll be okay. So it was a two plus one. For natural, so the six total? Yep. Oh, okay, well. Okay, so second action will be moved to another bandit run. Uh, I can go a letter to go here. Let's see, so we have C, A, and the leader. After C, and then second strike. 
Okay, what's your attack? 20 plus 3. Are you kidding? Hold up. She's... She's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm getting that 20 for my attack. My damage is shit, but my attacks are pretty good. Watch, ChatGPT is going to be like, Are you sure Moira is not using loaded dice? <laughs> yeah, my damage is 5 plus 1. So, 12. Okay, so we now, I think, just have the leader. No, we have Bandit A. Okay. I'll reload my gun. Oh, wait, and, is uh, it? Yeah, it's Warren's turn. Reload my gun, fire at the Bandit leader, then uh, reload. All right, what's your attack roll? Eight plus nine. What the Damn. fuck? What? Hold up. So it's 15 didn't hit, and now it's 17 doesn't hit. Hold on, hold on. Something's something's yeah. fucky here. A twenty. Oh yeah, twenty one did. Oh god. I'm gonna have to do some shit. Okay. What is the bandit leader's AC? <laughs> All right, Ron, it's your turn. All right, I will attempt to trip the bandit leader. I do not trip the bandit leader. I got a three plus six. <laughs> you don't know. You might be very active and fun in that one. Wait, you don't. You can't do that anyway. Oh, you have a sickle. Right. That's right. Yep. What was it? Six plus three. <laughs> Or three plus six? Three plus six, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same result. No, but you do have to write it that way because it'll reset the roll work. Okay. Yeah, That's fair. I'm, I'm just going to attack it. Okay, remember you do suffer multiple attack penalty. Fifteen plus three. Eighteen? Hmm. Yep. Well, see, then eighteen will hit, but seventeen did not. So no. now, we're, now we're slowly creeping up to a number that might actually hit him. Whoops. That will specify I will use my shield boss, actually. Ah. Oh. Shield boss. Yeah. Okay, the AC is eighteen. Yep. Okay, we've discovered the eight, the AC. Okay, for how much damage? Sweet. Eight damage. Five plus three. Piercing. Bludgeoning. Bludgeoning. Oh, okay. A bludgeoning damage. <laughs> Is the bandit leader still standing? Okay, so you're looking severely injured. Well, that's good that they don't just knock them out, you know, like everyone else. And that's why this guy's the leader. Yep. yep. Even though he's not a very good leader, if the one person just curtails him once. <laughs> 
Also, thankfully, I am wearing His my... AC was 5, so he was like, oh, Alright, no. uh, does Ron have anything left? Uh, are there any bandits within melee range of me? Just normal bandits. I don't... Uh... I think... We only have bandit A, so... Can you ask how is bandit A in melee range of me? Okay. What the hell is going on with my double-clicking? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna use my third attack on that one. 20 plus, minus... Minus two. I got a 10, 12 minus two with my shield boss. Okay, so we know that their AC is 11, so it's now Stazric's turn. Oh god, I have to freaking use battle medicine. Hold on. I like how you're the only one that took damage. Yeah, thanks guys. <laughs> I think I failed. Uh, let's see, battle medicine... Da -da -da. Same DC for treat wounds, which I think I failed. Whoops, not treat. Poison treat wounds. 15. Okay. Actually, I... No, I healed. I healed, uh... Okay, I healed 2d8 hit points. Could have taken some risky surgery. Also, what the fuck, guys? What? <laughs> getting, I'm getting smacked the fuck around is what, is, you know, is what. So let's see. Four plus... Cool. Healed 11 HP. Okay. I'm gonna grapple this fucker. Twenty Okay, I've grabbed him. Oh shit, it's his turn though. <laughs> and dead. As a reminder, he is currently grappled. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm gonna start rocking out. <laughs> okay. Nope. That is not. That's actually one below the check that he would need. God damn it! Hal, come on! Oh, okay, well... That, yeah, he could have tried, like, several more times, but, uh... That means it is He's now... He's demoralized. He's like, oh, whatever. Bandit A, yeah. Um... Ron trip bandit A? Eh? No, he no. trying to trip uh... the leader and failed. 
So how do you break free from a trip? <laughs> <laughs> Standing up? Which would trigger your attack of opportunity. Does a 17 hit Ron's AC? With your shield? Remember, you don't no. have your shield raised. I don't, and it still doesn't hit. Okay. Eight, 18 AC. God damn! Yeah, today's second action is network error. Also, did Bandit A's attack go up, or am I... Yeah, it did, because I think it was the fourth step. No, uh, C was fourth step. Okay, it's Moira's turn again. Uh, okay, I think I was already fighting uh, Bandit A, so I will try to fight Earth Action Strike against Bandit A. You know, I really think I should go under after the Bandit Leader because I have a lot of stuff there. Okay. Jesus. How come? <laughs> um, hold up. <laughs> That's an extreme amount of damage that I can do. That's not my role because it should only be a one d six plus a two d six plus two. Like I was asking you if Bandit has been defeated. Right? Yeah, I know. It's like you're the one that knows this. Yeah. It's a total of ten damage. Hmm. Four plus one times two. Damn, okay, Bandit A is made of some stern stuff. Uh, second attack well, he is Bandit the second in command. Alright. Well, we assume that A is the second in command. You know. <laughs> so you have a short sword, right? Yes. Okay, uh, what's your second attack roll? Uh, fifth, we know 15 hits. Okay, so damage is... There you go, 6 plus 1. No! Uh. <laughs> no! You motherfucker! No! <laughs> you won't know until... <laughs> you won't know for another no. Oh, man. Fuck it. We're gonna try it again. Yeah, nope. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that would've been funny if it worked, though. Oh, that's some no. shit. That is some shit. We made it so far. Cliffhanger ending. We don't have to make it a cliffhanger. Hold up. No, no. I we're not going to make this. If I was in melee range. We're not going to make this a cliffhanger ending. I'm going to. I'm taking executive override. Let me get my dice. Uh -oh. <laughs> Let me get my dice so I can have something to roll for the other characters. Now the bandit Salt leader's AC, though. Huh? We do know the bandit leader's AC. 
We know Bandit A and Bandit Leader's AC as well as their attack bonus, which is why I'm saying that because we know because we know what they can do, I am going to just use my physical dice and... Where's your dice tower? God damn it. Yeah, give me your dice tower. And then I can... Oh, I'm sorry, Wonton, I didn't mean... I don't mean to keep kicking you. But you really need to stop hiding underneath my, uh, underneath my desk. That's where bad things happen. Alright, I will use my app to roll for Stasrik, and then I will use GK's dice tower to roll for, uh, the bandits and stuff. So I'm gonna say bandit A is fucked. Yeah, he's taking a lot of damage. Okay. So... <laughs> oh god, I would hate that so much. Uh, anyway. So... I'll say Bandit A's dead. Okay, which means Bandit Leader is the only one. Uh, Moira, I think, would have to use her final action to stride to the Bandit Leader. Yes. <laughs> God. I'm not okay. Just burping like hell. Oh, you didn't finish that yet? Mm-mm. I've been typing. <laughs> no, I know, but I thought you My hands are cramping. How of all the things, of all the dice in here, I pull out the one of the fireball dice, looking for a D20. So for for your uh so here's the thing about the fireball dice, right? So they're cool dice that have fireballs in the middle, right? Mm hmm Because the thing is though, the dice set only has D sixes. Because the spell fireball uses d6s nope that's that's a duck die hold on uh whose who's turn is it hold on let me it's let me fine see. all right warren uh we know the bandit leader's ac is uh 18 so go ahead and well isn't it lowered from him being grappled oh yeah it is he's flat-footed now so it's now 16 let me find where the fuck a d20 is in here i have several d20s go ahead and do your stuff while i grapple Yep, I will fire at him. And we got... 18 plus 9, 27. Uh, yeah, that's a critical hit. Alright. Roll that right, damage no. roll. Yeah? AC's 18. AC's 16 because Stasrix got him oh, held. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I do 12 damage. There's uh, D20. We don't know his HP, but and didn't it say he was like badly injured or something? Yeah. It was badly injured. Uh, I'm gonna call it. Yeah, I'm gonna call it and say, yeah, I didn't even have to. Uh, break out the dice. I didn't even have to break out the dice because, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we are going to have to remember when we get into combat the uh, limited messages. Did you just break that? No, it just came undone again. Probably because of a certain fluff. Yeah. Wonton, 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 Wonton. Come here, come here. I want your attention. Come here. Wonton, Wonton, Wonton. So, okay. The pro is a lot. I think it's like 20 a month. Oh, yeah, no, it's expensive. Unnecessarily expensive. Yeah. Brought out my physical dice for nothing. <laughs> well, uh, we got 15 more minutes until session technically ends. Uh, you guys want to just shoot the shit? <laughs> Sounds like enough time to watch a 42-hour speedrun. Fuck off! <laughs> Hold on, let's see if I can do a response in other chats. Fantastic! <laughs> nope, I can't even go back, okay. Here, here's your uh, dice tower back. <laughs> so... Immediately he gets shot in the head and dies. Pretty much, yeah. 
You know what? They're all unconscious, though. Here's the thing. They're all unconscious, which means... I can save at least... I can save at least one of them. No, that was D, I think, that ran. Hold on. No, let's, that ran. let's scroll up. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Oh my god, no wonder it... No wonder it put a limit. There was a lot. It, well, we also yeah. had to keep correcting it. It was Bandit D, yeah. Okay. I still find it cool that, uh... I still find it cool that it made morale checks for the bandits. And Bandit D was like, oh, hell no. He, he was the new recruit, so he was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. Aside from a few having to make corrections for it, it is actually kind of cool for the combat. Except for yeah. the fact that it's like, uh, we need to have it determine if its own minions are still standing. Yeah. Okay, so it far I haven't spells yet, has it? Huh? It has not used... spells yet, has it? No, because none of us cast magic. I feel like it would really struggle with certain things like phantasmal killer or whatever. What does that even do? Wait. Never mind, no. I used that once. Hmm. Greg Newton's. Nom, nom, nom. Hmm. Yeah, no, I use that on uh, Fenris. Surprisingly, uh, when I, when he was made in Five E, Fenris did more did more than just casting haste and a bunch of defensive spells on himself to make himself unhittable. Yeah, I don't believe that. That's fake news. It is fake news. Not really, so though. Do we level up from this? I'm gonna have to ask it <laughs> when, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask it and when... In, like, 13 minutes. That oh, I forgot to... I forgot to heal myself. Yeah, not when you run out. Yeah, it's like, oh, you started typing at, like, 8.15? Okay, you must wait until 9.15. Oh, yeah. That could be it. It might be once you hit the uh, limit is when the timer so... starts, actually. Oh, that would really suck. That would really suck. So, out of curiosity, what is Warren's AC? 18. Right. Y'all suck! <laughs> yeah. God damn it, I'm gonna have to get a ranged weapon. You're the William of the group. Get fucked. <laughs> yeah, I have padded armor. My AC is 15. But you know what? Apparently I've been carrying this damn party with all the fucking knowledge skills I have. Well, apparently we need to do more dialogue stuff because when we go into combat, we reach our limit of messages per hour. Yeah, I forget how many messages per hour it's how how many messages per hour also, it is. You're right, the cost would be twenty dollars a month. Oh, no, it's not worth twenty dollars. It's not worth twenty dollars a month. We're just gonna have to strategize and find ways for us to Here's another idea. squeeze up. Oh, yep. What if you change what you typed up? Would it still count as a new prompt? Hmm. Let's see. Ah, okay. It also cleared out what your fucking second attack roll was.
What was your second attack? I don't remember anymore because I... Cool. Let's just make something up. I think it was... I think it was... I think you had a 15. Or something. I was able to knock it out. I know that much. I don't think so. 11 plus 4 equals 15. And you did like... Damage, More right? ideals. Okay, plus so it was tw oh it was twelve plus three equals fifteen. Moira deals. I think he dealt seven damage, right? Yeah, this one. Oh! Jesus, this this guy's fucking tanky. Oh. Okay, guys, 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 pay attention now. Pay attention now. We're back. <laughs> uh, so it's Warren's turn. And what was it now? What was your attack roll? Uh, 18 plus 9. Warrant. God damn it. <laughs> Did it again. How much damage did you deal? Well. And just because I don't feel trust I don't I don't trust this thing, I'm gonna gonna do a little thing, little control C here. Jesus. Oh, damn. These are some tanky-ass bandits. All right, I'll uh, reload and attack again. Or, never mind. 13. Yeah, that's not... Okay, Ron, what are you going to do? Oh, freaking boy. Uh... Stickle time. All right. Are we still recording by the Yep. Okay. I didn't know if he had stopped it during the... Uh... I missed with a 7 plus 8. Good start. <laughs> Second hit's better. 17 plus 3 for 20. Yep, okay. 16 plus 4? 17 plus 3. Oh, 17 plus, plus 3 equals 20. Deals 6 damage. 3 plus 3. And deals 6 uh, <laughs> slashing. slashing. Oh my god! Fuck! I'm about to punch this guy in the face three I'm times. How much HP is still on this guy? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so he's take he's taking a lot. Okay, so far we have six, eighteen. <sighs> no, that's band a day. We have taken 18. He's taken 18 damage. That's a fuck ton. Uh, 
Yeah. What twenty six now? It's a lot. Okay, I'm I'm not I'm not scrolling back up all the way. Okay. Uh, Ron, you gonna do anything else? Nope. Okay. Yes, I am. But I maintain I maintain Punch my grip. legs. Okay, let's see if I manage to punch him. Not my fist, my gauntlet. Twenty-four. An ideal. Oh shit! Hold up. I forgot. Stasrik is a fucking investigator. To devise a stratagem. That would be the 18. Plus 6, anyway. It's the same attack roll, but I get to do more damage because of my strategic strike. Uh, I dealt 8. Uh, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do another uh I got another 18. <laughs> I got another 18 on the die, so I I hit again. Okay, now I don't have strategic strikes, so I'm just going to roll some damage. Six damage. Oh my god! What? <laughs> How? How is he still standing? <laughs> Jesus, he must have like a hundred HP. How much HP does this dude have left? I don't know. It is the bandit leader's turn. Determine three actions with the bandit leader. The bandit leader is no longer grappled. Level 20 bandit here. <laughs> They're pulling from the uh, apologies. Oh, Jesus! What the hell is going on? Uh, I'm scared. Better. Wow, okay, it actually... D wow, no. Guys, I like this. Yeah, it actually dispenses yeah. the three attacks. Holy shit, yeah. Uh, this is like... 
Although, Thumbs ow, up fucking that shit right now. eight damage. Jeez. Yeah. Like wow, that's half my HP. <laughs> oh, did I also mention that uh, despite giving him no armor, I also gave him no constitution? <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. Anyway, uh, it's Moira's turn again. You know what I'm doing. No, is it a band of A's? Isn't he oh yeah, it is band of A's turn. Oh yeah, <laughs> Yeah, the second tank. We just all assume that band of A's. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> Try to force it. <laughs> <laughs> like he goes over to Stalzer. <laughs> like, fuck off! <laughs> and that band today really does not like this. <laughs> oh! Oh, come on. Regenerate, come on. Oh, what? Seven you did take seven damage. That was better. That was good. Alright. Now it's Moira's turn. Okay, Moira. Oh, you never used your action to use Hunt Prey on Band today. That's because I kept changing my... That's because I basically struck, and then they were down, and I'm like, well, I know... It might be a good idea to use your first action to Hunt Prey on Band today. Because you have a flurry, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so that'll, you know... Unless you don't want to. You don't... What? Why? My, my attack uh, penalties are still pretty low, even with... Yes, but they can be lower! <laughs> I was saving my hunt prey for the bandit leader. You don't have to save it, it's just an action you can do. Okay, then fine. You don't have limited uses, This is it's not a spell. Okay. You're a spell. Kill something because this bandit leader have is stabbing me! <laughs> I killed two of them! Yes, and I killed two. Hold up. No, I did not kill two of them. I killed one of them. All right, fine. First action. No, you don't have to, but it is a suggestion. I don't know why you're saving it, though. Because I thought I could only do it like once per day. No, it's just a. You do it. Uh, it it lasts an entire day, but you can just keep doing it. Until either your first your hunted prey dies or twenty four hours have passed. Okay, so hunt prey band of day. Okay. okay. Damn! I think that's a critical hit. God damn it. Please don't make him still standing. <laughs> Fine, oh, <John>. fucking <laughs> Lee. <laughs> okay, I will change my hunted prey to the bandit leader and end my turn. Yeah. All right, it's now Warren's turn. All right. Reload and fire again. Nice. 16 plus 
Yeah, too bad I don't have him grappled anymore. Yeah, what a 16 plus 9? 25. Oh, no, that's right. Sorry. 16 plus 9 equals 25. Alright, how much damage? Two. Did I mishear that? <laughs> nope. Two damage. <laughs> oh my god. Hopefully he only has one. <laughs> If you yeah. fucking cherry tap this guy to unconsciousness, <laughs> I swear, man. That's gonna be as accurate as they can make it. Still standing, ah. okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you when you're too damage. Alright, and then you have to reload, so it's Ron's turn. Alright, Ron. Oh, we could be flanking. Yeah, but he was already flat-footed from the grapple. Was I'll he, move into Well, flanking. he's not. Yeah, okay. Since that's better than what I was going to do anyways. Then I will attack with my shield boss. Got a nap fucking one. <sighs> what the hell, guys? No! And then I missed. And then my turn. That's good. We're, we're not gonna get wiped by one bandit lead. We are not. No, I'm uh, no. Maybe Tazric might. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I might. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I can't use battle medicine on myself anymore. Well, let's see. I have to actually make my medicine check to see if I succeed on... Yeah. Okay. Oh. You, by the way, you over there. How much damage did you suffer? Me? Yeah. Seven. You heal for 12. I didn't need it, but okay. What do you mean? I had 12. Well, now you have 19. Yeah, so 20 does hit Ron's AC, right? Yep. Nine slashing damage. Ow. Jesus. Don't do this. We are already 10 minutes past session time. Okay. Um. Uh, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> so bandit leader is now the bandit leader's second action. Oh nope, maybe use all its actions. <laughs> uh, hold up. Multiple attack battle to you, fucker. Okay, oh, so... That would, that would 19 would still it. hit, yeah. Uh, how are you looking? Ask it to roll damage. <laughs> no, I'm unconscious. Cool. I had two hit points. Oh, shit. So, why'd you heal me? Wait. 
How you never? We both, we both had the same amount of hit points. Oh, okay. And I was attacked for seven damage earlier. By the way, that's how. I didn't real. I forgot you were attacked. Okay. It's now Moira's turn. Uh, well, he's already my hunted prey. Yeah, so I think you just have to attack him because he's still yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, next one's a 21, though. Nice. What's the... 16 plus 5. 16 plus 5. Whoops. Plus 5 equals 21. Moira deals. 5. And then attack number 3. We don't talk about attack number 3. Okay. 6. Oh. <laughs> Can I have this back now? I heard 6 total. 3 plus 3. Yeah, Sin typed 5. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, the damage was five. The third attack was six. Yeah. Oh, okay. Whoops. Yeah, I just, I just let it skip. Uh, we don't talk about that one. Anyway, Warren. It does say that I have you reloaded. Attack loading, uh, <laughs> remaining. So it is nice that I mean. Yeah. Hal is paying attention to that. Okay, Warren. What you doing? All right, I'll attack him. Never mind, that misses. It's a sixteen. Damn. Oh, are you flanking now or no? No. Oh. No, no. I'm he's he's still dead on. All right, reload and attack again. And no, that's a miss. Fourteen. Uh. Guys, I don't like our I don't like our options at the moment. <laughs> All right, Ron, roll your uh, roll your death thing. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, you have to make a recovery save. Uh, it just started Mr. making Recovery us attack. This. And Sovereign. Yeah, yeah. It just proceeded. It's like, I know how this battle's gonna go. <laughs> it's just a flat check, okay. I rolled a 14. Success. I believe that means you are no longer dying? You're just unconscious. Yep. Should be, I should be able to bring you back up, then. Let me check. I can't, I can't, I actually can't use risky surgery during combat. Oh. Okay. Then how, then how is it risky? Yeah. Because I deal damage to you. All right, time to see what my medicine check for you is. Ho <laughs> ho! My friend. You are healing. Huh? You brought it back. Aww. He's playing fetch finally? Holy shit, are you ready to hear your uh, healing? You're you're you you're here, right? Yes. 
Hello? 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 Who? What? Where? Oh, are you ready? You heal 27 hit points. I'm dead. You're dead. <laughs> Integer overflow. <It's> too much. <laughs> Reset to zero. This is a mother. <laughs> Isn't that the one that had the glitch that if you healed it, you could actually get it to zero? Mother three. You know what? I am not going to step to flank. Run away! Step to attack. No, I'm going to... <sighs> you know what? I should I should pick a weapon off of the bandits. Yeah, like sickles and sunflowers and stuff. Oh. This is going on long time, though. What? That's not how this works. <laughs> Hold up. Been playing William wrong this whole time. <laughs> oh, the bandit leader has already been defeated? <laughs> what, what, what? He died standing up. <laughs> I guess, guys, we did not notice. You know what? I'm going to take it. I'm going to take that victory. Where's the party? Does the party level up? And how much max HP did the bandit leader have? Uh... It was toying with us. <laughs> you the game master? Oh, well, we could just ask it how much damage the bandit leader took, and it might be able to calculate that. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> that's no, that's bullshit. No, uh, -uh. surely not. <laughs> you are not. Apologies. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what about this magical creature that we also had in our encounter? Uh, that's for next time. Yeah. <laughs> you could put it in now. Close, oh, close I could, yeah. Screen, I will. But that way you don't have to worry about it for the hour in which you can only have so many responses. Everyone asks how what is Ron doing? Never how is Ron How is Ron doing? He's doing better now after healing twenty seven HP. Yeah. Have we healed the glowing uh side effects. Yes. Anyway, okay, so so, so are we uh level two then? Yes. I'll make sure to update. Oh oh, oh yeah, hold on, hold on. The party shall loot the bodies. Don't do this to me. Regenerate response. Oh god. I kind of wish I turned I left the stream on. It was generating all the all the lines at once. And it it it's 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 left a hefty. Okay, so here's what we have. 
none of this equipment matches whatever the fuck we were actually doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking it, though. So the bandit leader has 30 gold pieces, some studded leather armor, a long sword, a dagger, and a belt pouch. Bandit A has 10 gold pieces with a scimitar and some leather armor. Bandit B has five gold pieces, a short bow, and a quiver of 12 arrows, even though I'm pretty sure... Also, we're discounting Bandit D. Wait, no! No, son of a bitch! Bandit D actually has the weapon I want! Because he has a sling, and a sling can make use of my high strength score. Ugh, god fucking damn it. Anyway, Bandit Z has eight gold pieces, a club, and hide armor. And then Bandit E has seven gold pieces, a hand axe, and leather armor. I'm taking the short bow. Well, you can throw a hand axe. Yeah, but... Uh, the thing about the hand axe and throwing is that makes it a ranged attack. And yeah. that would be one ranged attack, whereas I could also have a short bow and 12 ranged attacks. <laughs> because let me tell you, I'm definitely going to be missing some of those attacks. Okay, but, but, you could just miss and then I pick it and I throw it back at you, since I'll be in melee. <laughs> okay. Sure. I'm taking the short bow. You take the hatchet. Okay. You take the hand I'll take, axe. I'll take the gold. It's fine. Oh, fuck off. Actually, right. I don't really... Actually, I don't... I really don't need it's gold only 55 because... gold. It would be nice to have some uh, better healing tools. Actually, these bandits carrying gold is a good sign because it means, you know, we can actually trade it. <laughs> you assume that gold is still used the same way in this planet. Well, maybe it's edible. I eat the gold. No, we're not. No, I'm not typing that up. Okay. Okay. Uh... You, is, is he picking up on the mic at all? Is he picking up on the mic? He was earlier, I think. Come on. You can do it. You can do it, chat GPT. Oh, shit, we're still recording. <laughs>